All right, super excited uh, to do today's Tom Talks. I'm doing it with a professional, professional driver and the chief instructor at the Porsche Experience here in Los Angeles. It's Johnny Cannabis. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, this is really cool. I obviously, I met you driving at the Porsche Experience yeah. and it was a, a, I mean, it is an awesome experience and I'm not here to uh, sell tickets, I think they probably <laughs> right. sell pretty well on yeah. their own. But you know, I've, I've a lot of people have hit me up about it because um, I did a video there once, right. and then people drive by it. They know that I like cars, and they ask me all the time. I'm like, go, man! Yeah, it is a fun, fun ride. Like, uh, like the day. I'm saying, you know, you guys do it right. Like the Thank you. facilities, first class. Mm -hmm. You end up being it's like Disney for just right. like people yeah. who like cars and especially porsches That's it. um you end up spending way more on merch because you walk <laughs> through there and you're like yep. i'll take six shirts and a hat right. and toys and like <laughs> it, it becomes a thing but man it is so rad and it's all because the cars are amazing and you guys are great instructors oh, thank um you. yeah it, it, it totally changes it like i've done now i've been there i don't know half a dozen times I've done other driving schools. I've done a couple track days, mm -hmm. and it's it's super addictive. Right. I liken it to when you hear about um, you know people get into golf, mm -hmm. right? And they you hit like a perfect swing, right? You have a five iron, right? And it just is clean. And then people are like, "Man, that feeling is amazing." It's like they're chasing that right. all the time. I feel a similar thing for like like a great run on a lap, yeah, where absolutely. you go like you. Because there's this thing that's, that happens with, I think, I'll say mostly men, <laughs> where most, a lot of guys, I'll say a lot, mm -hmm. go like, oh yeah, I know how to, I'm a good driver. Of course, right. And and I'll, I'll admit that I was that way too. Where sure. I was like, yeah, I know, it. I, I've driven cars forever, mm -hmm. I like driving cars, I like driving them aggressively, therefore, right. I'm a great driver. Right. And then you show up to a place like the Porsche Experience, and you go out, and you do a lap and you're like, oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing out here. <laughs> um, and then somebody like you goes, mm -hmm. it's cool, I'll show you. Right, right. But you do find, I'm assuming that so many people have no idea what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd say the majority, but yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of, oh, I know what I'm doing, right? That yeah. attitude of I've had all these cars. I, I have a Mustang and it's super powerful. Therefore, I'm a great right. race car driver. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And yeah, there, there's so much to driving, so many facets. And the thing about driving is you just never stop learning either. So anyone that thinks, oh, I know what I'm doing, um, you know, we can typically pull stuff out of them that they may have been doing wrong for decades. You really? Know? So yeah, absolutely. So, so many habits that you habits, by. bad habits, or just not really knowing the proper technique. Plus, it it also depends on how you might have come up through driving. You know, what did you drive? Have you done track stuff? Have you gone racing? Sure. Did you start in high horsepower, which can mask many mistakes, or did you learn from something that required more smoothness, then go into something with some horsepower? Because it's something that nobody wants to hear, right? Right. Nobody wants to hear that you'll become a better driver if you apply these skills on a less powerful car first. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to tell someone, you know, no, go get a Miata and go yeah. drive around for a while. Yeah. Like, I don't want to. I want this Corvette or this GT3 or whatever yeah. it might be. Guilty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, yeah, I mean, to learn in a momentum car, as we call them, it, it requires smoothness and you mm -hmm. have to be absolutely perfect. So that's where you develop the proper skill set or foundation yeah. in order to go into faster stuff and drive it correctly. I have a neighbor here who um, used to compete, used to race competitively. Mm, okay. And do you know what his daily driver is here? What's that? A Miata. Yeah, I and believe he, it, yeah. he absolutely, he's like, oh, he goes, I love this thing. And he yeah. drives like a, like, I've been with him in cars and he can drive like a, fuck, like you feel like you're with a, like a pro. Yeah. You're like, holy, like even in traffic, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, dude. like he's, he's doing he's, stuff he, you don't do. Yeah, right? for yeah, sure. Right. But I mean, he was a competitive driver. Sure. Though, but like, his, his Miata, he's like, this is they're my great. favorite thing to drive. I came up through Miatas. I mean, they're they're an incredible platform to learn how to drive and race properly. Now, I do think, because we haven't really gotten into this before uh, when we've talked, but is it is nuts to me that anyone can be like, oh, I'm a professional driver. Like, <laughs> it's like, because I feel like I get this thing where, like, I, let's say I go to a wedding or a sure. dinner party and, you know, 
you end up talking to somebody and they're like, so what do you do? And I'll be like, I'm a comedian. And they're yeah. like, come on. They're like, <laughs> right, what? right. I'm like, no, I'm a comedian. They're like, you're a you're a stand up comedian, and you're like, <laughs> right, yeah. And tell me like, something funny, right? Well, they they want to tell something funny, but they're like, they're also just like incredulous. They're like, Wait, sure, you you actually make a living, and I'm like, yeah, man. And they're like, telling jokes, and I'm like, right. And then I get it. I go, you know, like here in L.A., like all my, like all my friends are comedians. It's the right. world I inhabit. But you go like, you go outside of that, and you're like, that's crazy. I feel the same way about someone being like i'm like you you're a fucking race car driver yeah, like yeah. it sounds preposterous yeah yeah i guess it does yeah but it's it's um honestly the exact same thing so i do yeah. relate it a lot to like being an actor or a musician or even a comedian yeah where it's it's chasing that dream it's something that that may seem a bit far out there and not tangible yeah. and and at some point through life we kind of give up and sacrifice a lot of stuff to pursue this yes this thing which is right? the same as the arts yes. it's the same thing and um yeah and then somehow later in life you you get there or get to at least part of it and look back and go wow okay this journey brought me here and here i am and i do this thing and and then you can be proud of it but yeah it is it's one of those it's not for everyone it's chasing the dream kind of thing and how did like so I, I've, I, I, the more I've gotten into mm -hmm. this world, like just like becoming an enthusiast about this, yeah. you go like, I keep hearing that a lot of the pros start with cart, go-kart racing. Of course, yeah. So I actually am so bummed that, because I remember being a kid yeah, and you go to the, I guess the public ones, you know, like. It's like the outdoor cart outdoor car things and you're the... like and it becomes like it's the best day of the year yeah right it's like usually someone's birthday or something sure. and, and you're on these carts and then it it never even occurred to me that there was a world where young people like kids right. are actually racing these yeah like how did you land in that right so yeah i mean yeah you hear go-karts or you explain it to the general public and that's what they picture is the family fun center you know yeah and and that kind of thing and then you understand you, f you figure out later that there is this real world of professional karting um for me it was basically my father bought me a cart at one point and one christmas opens up the blinds and there it is sitting out back and it was the best day of my life and uh and was he a a, a motor sports guy he was so my dad was a uh, yeah he he was a mechanic and then an, a racer himself okay and worked with corvettes a lot back in the in the 70s we're from detroit originally so kind of sure that whole world um but yeah and i was bmx racing and stuff like that as a kid and then one, like I said, one Christmas opens the blinds at Christmas and there's this go-kart sitting outside and, and we went and drove it that day and I was hooked. I remember being hooked. I remember my grandfather looking at my dad and going, oh, you're screwed. It's in his blood. Yeah. You know, just knowing that that yeah, was the moment, you're in. you know? Yeah. And then from there you, you just get into, you know, uh, racing, you know, um, and multiple classes. Um, there's, there's races all over the world, huge fields. Um, the, you know, if you look at a top level karting team, those budgets and the equipment and everything they have, that's, it's equivalent to any pro sports car team. It's insane. One of the things, there, there's so much to, that you learn as you learn more about mm -hmm. this world. But one of the things that has really stood out to me is just how much money it takes to, it's all about money <laughs> to like compete in this world. Yeah. Like so many, even if you watch like these, uh, like that. There's that fantastic F1 series on Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. Drive, they, it's so it's done so well. It's produced so well. It's it is. dramatized, and you're, I mean, like I I've said it here before that like you watch the first episode and you're like, I guess I'm an F1 fan. Yeah, right. Like, you're right. like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. But you learn about the money at that level, which is yeah. extraordinary. Right. But then you also in that a lot of those guys in the series, uh, they it's kind of split. Some of them are like grew up extremely wealthy mm -hmm. and then there's the ones who they're like we had no money right and my parents and everyone sacrificed so much yep. just for me to be able to compete yep. and i've met even uh like instructors who are like you know i was in this what circuit or competing sure and i just couldn't have much i didn't have enough money to keep going mm -hmm. you know yep. but it's That's me it's so <laughs> much money yeah, and it's interesting because if you if we talk about instructors for a second, you know, I always joke that none of us meant to be here. You know, mm -hmm. you, I didn't grow up saying I want to be a professional driving instructor. I right. grew up wanting to be a professional race car driver. Yeah, we fall into this instructing world as race car drivers because it's really the perfect job for us. We stay in a car, we have seat time. Yeah, we can do it for periods of a time and then take off and go racing for a while and come back. That kind of thing. It's uh, 
very independent. It's it's a nice way to to make it work. Um, but yeah, it's 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 purely about money. I did not come up with a bunch of money, so the struggle was real coming yeah. up through racing, you know, and having regular jobs and realizing that doesn't afford me time to go do this and trying to figure out how do I make some money so that I can put a car together so I can go racing, hopefully make something of that and then progress up the ladder. And it's it's incredibly tough. It's frustrating. It, it must be a lot like what you do, going on the road in your early days and just oh. scraping stuff together to make it work. It's, it's essentially the same thing. Very. There's there is a real parallel with that because mm-hmm. I you know you you have nothing and it pays nothing when right. you're like starting out. Even as you're progressing I and mean, when you're like a legit yeah. middle act, the most you'll get paid is a hundred dollars a show. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not going to do 40 shows in a week. You know? <laughs> right, you're right. You're going to do like six. Yeah. So it, you have to supplement with other jobs. And yep. meanwhile, your friends are like, I'm buying a house. And, yeah. I'm, and you're yeah. like, oh, really? <laughs> what about you? And you're like, I'm, yeah. I bought a fucking soda. <laughs> right, like, right. Yeah. Bought like, a bag of Doritos at yeah. 7-Eleven. Yeah. And it's, it's very much like that. Yeah. You're, but you're, the, the thing is, it's probably similar because uh, I've told people who are, you know, they, they go, they want to do stand up and like mm-hmm. I want to be my career. I go. I always go. Are you obsessed though? Like, are yeah. you obsessed with it? Because if you're not obsessed with it, you're not going to. And you see it because you'll see, like, hey, what happened to that guy? And they're like, well, he ended up getting like a real job. You know, yeah. a real job. Right. And right, like, right. and you're like, and I never blame him. And I'm like, yeah, but like, he wasn't obsessed. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of uh, I'll never forget it. And it's I still hear it all the time. Um, kind of a mentor back in the day for me once looked at me and said, how bad do you want it? Yeah. And that has stuck with me. And even, you know, in those down times where you're maybe thinking of giving it up, it's, well, how bad do you want it? And when it, when it possesses you, when you're obsessed with it like that, and it's all you can think about, and let's say you do go work somewhere else for a while, and it's, again, it's all you can think about, or maybe even more than before because you're not doing it. Yeah. That's what fuels that desire to get back out there and do it. And for me, it's, it's, it's part of my everything. It's my soul. It's who I am. So yeah. getting in a car and not just driving, but racing, you know, competing, going sure. wheel to wheel with people. That's what fills me up. That's what keeps me alive. Yeah. You know, so you, that's, you're a competitor. That's, man. that's yeah. it. Yeah. So as a, like right now, mm-hmm. do you still, you can take a break from, from instructing and actually go race? Yeah, I can. I've been very fortunate. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not chasing the dream anymore as far as going pro racing because uh, I'm with the job at Porsche and and where my life is at the, at the moment. That's that's taking up all my time. But um, I'm very fortunate to still have um, the ability to get out there and go play a little bit. So I, I'm uh, working with a vintage race car team right now that travels across the country and they um, invite me out to help them as far as coaching and a little bit of management, but also driving the race cars. So uh, last year, I think I did maybe four or five races, something like that. Yeah. And uh, hoping to do the same thing this year. Just did one in May up at Road America. How was that? Great. What what were you driving? I was driving a little prototype called a Lola B0890. And it's, it's, essentially an LMP3 car so a smaller Le Mans style prototype uh-huh. um I quick think little I saw car. a photo of you in this maybe right probably open top, like, yeah, yeah open top car red and white and yellow um little two three liter car uh 2.3 liter uh quick little thing paddle shifts all that just is a, this it right here there it is that's that's one of them in fact that yeah. might have been the car that uh damn that dude they bought so that's like a it's very like f1-esque right like that like a it, i mean they look yeah it's, like it, yeah right it's in that vein of a formula car or a proper prototype um what is know. the i've always wanted to know what is because i there is this great video of um the the original top gear cast mm-hmm. you know the three the yeah. british guys one of those guys goes to a track one day mm-hmm. and he's like here's what it's like to drive where i'm going to experience or try to experience what it's like to drive a formula one car yeah and what they give him first is the dial down like, like an practice F3 for car or yeah and or dude yeah. this is a guy who uh, mind you is not a not your level he's not a race car driver mm-hmm. but he's a guy whose whole world is just automobiles like he's yeah. driven everything yeah he can't make it out of the first turn like he spins out and he's like what the fuck like he <laughs> and he keeps trying to do it and he's like i literally and the they're 
trying to instruct them. What is like driving that like as opposed to a pedestrian car? Yeah, it's it kind of goes back to what we said in the beginning about bringing people out and, and pulling stuff out of them when they think they're a good driver. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's the fundamentals. It's the basics. So a, a car like that or like a formula car requires incredible smoothness and precision. Mm -hmm. Precision is really the key. So you need to be turning in gently, unwinding your wheel, rolling to the pedals, feeling what the tires are doing, not, you know, manhandling that car Jerking too much around, and throwing yeah. it around because that'll, that'll lose the control, right? So it's just being as, as methodical, as smooth, as precise as you can in that car. And, and that's a delicate thing. You know, yeah. in the car, I have a light touch to the wheel. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about all the basics that we teach every day too, which is, you know, look into the corner early, you know, look for your exits, roll to that power, unwind. And those wheel. are actually, things that you teach are actually things you're practicing. They're in my head all the time. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. Because yeah. you can never stop learning, like I said earlier. Sure. And those are the, the, the basics, you know. Um, just like if, if you go to the track, I know you're fairly new to it, but you go to the track, those are the things you should concentrate on mm -hmm. for the rest of your track driving career or just even street driving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, the stuff that I heard a few weeks ago at Coda in, in Austin mm -hmm. is, you know, it's very similar to the stuff that I would hear at, at uh, Porsche Experience. Right. You know, and, and I remember one of the first things he was like, dude, he goes, uh, <laughs> your biceps are flexing. Cause yeah, I was like, I, get, too tight. I, was, yeah. I was like, oh yeah. Cause like first got on, I was like, well, I don't, I don't yeah. know what this track looks like, you know? Yeah, no, I mean my first, one of my first races, it was at Road Atlanta in the uh, mid nineties and I got out of that car and I could not open my hands up from the wheel cause I was holding on so, so tight, tight the whole yeah. race. And yeah. immediately I was like, okay, I must be doing that wrong. Yep. Now it's it's a delicate it's touch. Delicate, it's fingertips, yeah. you know. It's it's just very gentle. And it's one heart. of those things too. A lot of times, uh, we did like another run of laps, where he was like, "Do you realize how loose you are now?" Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh yeah, like I didn't realize it, but and then how much better that feels." Right, you know? right. Because like, oh. that equals smoothness, and smoothness yeah. is fast. So one of the big things that when people ask me about like what you learn at those things, I go, the, "One of the biggest differences between street like pedestrian driving and track." that really stands out, I think, to like a, a new person mm -hmm. is the application of braking and how yeah. it's the like inverse of how you brake on a on right. a, a, like a street where right. you you kind of go slow to hard, you know, like you you, you you push in later, but on a track you yeah. apply that pressure like at the beginning. Pretty much, yeah. So that, for me, when I first started, that was my eye-opening moment of yeah. being in a car on a track, and the first time the guy went to the brakes going, whoa, that's what we're doing? Yeah. You know, um, and that's usually, again, for anyone, that's the eye-opener. Oh, my gosh, I didn't know that, you, you know? I didn't know that's break. how we brake. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to get the maximum braking power out of the car, you know? So... Typically, you know, you don't want to jam on the brakes. You don't want to punch the brakes. Mm -hmm. You still want to roll into it. But right. once you've rolled into it, then you're applying a pretty great amount of pressure initially yeah. and then tapering off of it as you're at the end of the brake zone or even trailing into the corner. You're just rolling off that brake gently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're trying to get that maximum stopping power done pretty early in your brake zone. Yeah, it, it, that to me has been one of those things where you know, especially if you don't, if I don't go for a while and then I do it, it's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. like, it's like that, that is different than going to a stop sign on the street. Right. Know? We're trying to be nice yeah. and gentle and yeah. smooth on the street. And again, you're still being smooth on the track, but it's, it's an aggressive smoothness. Yeah. Cause you essentially what you're learning, I think when you start doing these track days and, and things like that is that you don't normally, most people think of a car as a tool that gets you from point A to point. It's a mode of transportation. Sure. Right, right. But on a track, I think what happens is you go, oh, I'm learning how to um, operate a machine. Yeah. Like th this is a machine that has incredible capabilities yep. and it takes expertise to maximize like the capabilities the of the machine. Of yeah. 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 No, that's what it is. And, and that, that's an interesting point because I, you know, early on, I remember when that started to click for me, it's mm -hmm. going, okay, I'm. I'm treating a vehicle differently than kind of we all learn to as we grow up. You yeah. Know, now, um, and we and I say this a lot in my coaching is that you drive the car, don't let it drive you. Yeah. You, know, you got to get up on the wheel. You've got to lean on the car. You got to load it up in the corner. Let the suspension do the work. There's a reason you know your cars have the ceramic brakes and the big brake calipers because when you go into that brake in the uh, in a heavy brake zone, that car will stop exactly how you want to. But yeah. you're controlling that. 
it's an amazing thing because you guys uh, at Porsche Experience, you have all these different, you know, uh, I guess you, whatever areas. Uh, I don't know what you guys call them. Uh, we call them modules. Modules yeah, or okay. exercises. So there's yeah. like you know, there's like weaving in and out of the cones, mm -hmm. and there's the what is it? The slip. Uh, uh, kick plate. The kick yeah, we plate. Have the kick plate there. Yeah. Then there's the drift. Uh, the low friction circle. Yeah. yeah so you yeah. just. I mean, it you it literally does feel like a Disneyland kind of. And thing. we call it that. You yeah. know, we kind of refer to it as the Disneyland for Porsches. Yeah. It's yeah. it's rad, man. It's yeah. it is the coolest thing. And and I've done other schools, and they're all fun. You know, you have like top tier instructors and you're doing sure. stuff but you guys do a great job there i i don't know how to explain to people who like who don't um aren't like really into cars mm -hmm. a lot of times you know they go what do you you know what kind of car do you have you tell them they're like wow i guess you have a really small dick and you're like yeah but that's not why i like this car <laughs> i just have a small dick but <laughs> but <laughs> And then sometimes you go, wait, do I like this car because my dick is small? Right. And then you're like, no, this car is amazing. <laughs> no, I still like the car. Uh, yeah. I still like the car. But I have, I've tried to explain to people, and I don't even know if I can articulate, like, yeah, I've driven a bunch of cars now. Yeah. A lot of fast cars, exotics, performance cars. And I'm not just saying this because you work there, but I, I kind of like, I, I don't know how exactly to explain why this love affair develops with Porsches and you see it a lot. You see people get into them and like, that's it. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, they call it Porsche passion or whatever they yep. want to call it. But it's like, there's like, there's this feel, it's a lot, some of, a lot of it's feel. So yeah. it, like you end up, you, it's hard to describe feel, but you can end up like romanticizing the sure. experience of driving this car. And I'm talking about from turning it on to holding the, you know, the, the, the shifter right. and the way that the car handles, it becomes like, addictive or even a trip to the grocery store in this thing you're like excited yeah, for it right you know? and right. it is different like i have a few cars to me i go like yeah this one's great this one yeah. rips but this one like this one's special special yeah. right and it's yeah i don't know yeah no i mean porsche's always had that you know for me my favorite car has always been a, a g model 911 so like a mid 80s 911 mm -hmm. and you know, i'm fortunate to own one now but um, there's just a feeling in that car. I mean, yeah. the way the door clicks, the way the door yes. shuts, the way the steering wheel feels, the way that big tack in the middle is, mm -hmm. all these little things. And half the time I'm driving around in that car just kind of geeking out on it, going, there's just something magical about this car. There's something magical. And that, that goes to the the most current thing. A brand new 911 Turbo S is that same feeling. You yeah. Know? And there's every touch point is Those very are Porsche. so fast. They are. They're, They're very so, fast. Yeah. So fast. It's an amazing car. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, yeah, there, there is just something about, like, I, I used to hear about that without even having any exposure, you know, mm -hmm. to like the yeah, community. Yeah. Right. And I, and I'd never driven one or anything. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's like when you hear people like they follow fish all over the country. For right. Every show, you know, <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, there must be a great band. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then like you get in this, these cars and you're like, oh, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Why people are in love. Yeah, the brand has always had that, which which is part of what makes it so magical. I think you know? what part of what happens is to a degree, if you like cars like I do, mm -hmm. it starts as a kid, right? Yep. And you have toys. And then the next, for me, the next thing was magazines. We'd get Road and Trend, yeah, Car and Driver, yeah. Motor Trend. And you just, you just geek out. You know, you're not driving these things. You're just looking at them. Yeah. And then, but you're fantasizing about driving them. Of course. And there's something about a Porsche that I think it feels like what that dream was. Like the mm -hmm. fantasy kind of comes alive. You're like, I feel yeah. like, like I'm a race car driver. Yeah. Okay. You know, like yeah. it, I think it kind of feels like, especially the GT cars. Now, oh, absolutely. I heard this thing. I don't know if this is true that um, I was actually at a, a dealership in, in Florida, a, a, an enormous one that had like, okay just the craziest inventory like you know you go some of these in some of these dealerships you go to and they're like here's our 911 and you're like <laughs> right right is there anything else here and yeah, they're like one yellow one huh no. yeah okay like, this is what we got and this is one of those ones where they had like Everything. five gt uh, 2 rs like wow. like one of those wow. things right but it's like huge south florida dealership okay and so i'm talking to the guy about it and he's like he was like oh um i think he told me that the biggest selling porsche is the macan and then maybe followed by the Panamera. I don't know if, if that was the order. 
It, it yeah, it's um, I believe it's uh, Macan and Cayenne, I think. But okay. the, uh, yeah, Macan in the states, the Macan is, is huge, incredibly popular. Yeah, and and then I uh, then I through talking to him more. I mean, he's like you know a dealership guy and, mm-hmm. and like knew everything about all the cars. He's like, oh yeah, like those cars, like the Macan, the Cayenne, mm-hmm. those essentially fund the GT line. Of course, like right? they yeah, and and it's like oh so. The success of those allows this GT market, which I didn't realize is like a small market share mm-hmm. of the Porsche brand. Right. Right. It's because, more the niche. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you, you can't build the fun stuff unless you're making enough money to do so. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. The, the way Mac- to go, Macan. Yeah. The Macans are Macans. great. Yeah. Yeah. And the Macan's a, a, an amazing car. I yeah. And it's truly a, a large sports car or a yeah, Probably it drives are amazing. A, a fatter sports car, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a it's a great car. I've it driven is. them. Yeah, yeah they're, they're they're a lot of fun. So uh, everything kind of that you guys make, or that they, you know. Yeah, everything they make is pretty darn good. You know, um, you know, I'm always impressed whenever the next thing comes out. It's always that much better than the last one, and they somehow keep doing it. So it's a really impressive. And then how long? Because I wanted to ask you this about because you're on a typical week. Mm-hmm. You're at what you could call it, Pecla or. Some people refer to it as PECLA or PCLA. Okay, yeah. PCLA. Um, you're there, what, five days a week? More? Yeah, five, maybe more some some weeks. It just depends, yeah. And then every one of those days you're driving. I, I Maybe not every day. You know, I mean, being the manager of the, the drive team itself and, and um, majority of the track operations that happen out there, I, there's a lot of admin stuff, a lot of inside, a lot okay. of meetings, oh. office work to do. So. Okay. Um, but I try to get out there as much as I can. You yeah, know? And, of course. And the beauty of it is I can go out there when I need, when I need to, or, or even want to, which yeah. is, which is great. But it's pretty awesome. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've been trying to get out there and coach more and get, get away from the desk a little bit. I told you what tough. I loved was because of COVID you had, um, separate cars. Yes. And that was a very cool experience. I, cool. Particularly because, you know, like being a visual learner. Mm hmm seeing the car in front of you do what you're supposed to do i think is very yeah very cool. i mean you know when covid came and and we finally were able to come back we had to revamp how we operated yeah you know? everybody so had I, to adapt had to, and yeah. yeah i had to come up with a new concept so um it was really just implementing the traditional driving school format which is a lot of radio coaching a lot of lead follow style stuff um and making it work in our somewhat smaller facility, you know, yeah. and, uh, it's worked out really well. Um, my coaches love it. The customers are giving us a lot of good feedback and there's something about having that big car in front of you leading you around. If you're a visual learner that, yeah. that makes it click real quick. Yeah. I think when you see, you know, like you can have someone next to you who's like break here and your brain will be like, not here. Right. Like this is too, right, too right, early. You know? right. or, but then when you see it, Right there, you're like, oh, he is breaking. Yeah, where that's where the to. lights are coming on. Yeah, yeah. then it, yeah. it really, I don't know, it kind of like, wait, you're like, all right, I'm gonna do it there. Yeah, I've always liked that style because, um, you know, I'm a visual learner as well, and it's just really nice to have that there. Plus, you know, some people like a person in the car, some people don't. It just kind of depends yeah. on what what type of person. I dig you it. Are. You know, I dig it either way. Mm-hmm. I just feel like that was that was such a change from what I experienced before. Right. And I right. was like, oh, this is pretty cool because that's cool. You're literally you're seeing the expert do it and then be like right. now you do it and you're like oh okay like mm-hmm. as opposed to just like break 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 you know turn here right. um it was it was a, a very cool experience what i another thing i wanted to ask you is so in stand-up you know you can i could do let's say i'll do end up doing five or six spots this week like getting on stage 15 okay. minute sets and i'm working on stuff and building stuff but you basically when i do that you feel like you're you're in the game. You're active. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like you're playing ball or whatever, sure, right? Sure. So I worked out six times this week. Right. And I could uh, take off five, six days a week, get on stage and be cool. At two weeks, I'll have um, something that I'll, like maybe the audience won't notice if I take two weeks off, but like I'll do a set and I'll be like, that was weird. What happened? Well, you know, I fucked up that setup. I um my timing like my rhythm was off. Yeah. Um, if you talk take more time off than that, you'll have like sea legs where you'll be like, I didn't know what the fuck yeah. was going. Like I forgot words, I forgot punchlines, blah blah blah. Is the same type of thing applied to like 
pro driving. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, it's it's about seat time. You know, and the yeah. more more experience you have, the better you are. And experience for us is seat time. It's being in a car. It's it's racing. It's it's running laps. When? How much time off? Can you have before you go like I'm a little shaky? I'm it a depends. little not shaky, but you know I'm a yeah. little off today. Everyone's different. Um, you know, it, being an instructor helps because you're still in a car to an extent, and you True. actually become hypersensitive to a lot of what's going on in the car when you're just sitting there coaching it or riding in the passenger seat. Yeah, um, which which really helps. Um, but it, it kind of depends. I mean, I, I've gone I've gone many months without getting out there and driving and, and racing and you get in a car and you gotta shake the rust off. You gotta you gotta, you know, build that aggression again. So you've taken months off. Oh I have, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Whether it be due to not having a deal or, you know, just other work going on, you know, or, you know, you're changing roles, I'm getting the Porsche job, so that's the focus for a while, whatever it might be. Uh-huh. Um you absolutely become rusty, and that's why it's it's nice to be able to get out there and still play a little bit and get in a race car a few times a year, mm-hmm. um, because I feel like I can I can shake off any rust I might have had for the last few weeks or few months, and then get right back in. And, and if you have like go. if you had like a few months off, and then you get on a track, do you like right away catch yourself being like you know making small mistakes or you I know? find myself talking to myself like okay. like. Johnny, don't do that. Come on, you you know better. You know, okay. like like focus on hitting your marks. You know, like get down get down to that apex. You know, yeah. um, just reminding yourself of the basics. Like you, this is what you do. You didn't forget how to do it. You're just a little rusty at it at the moment. You yeah. Know? And yeah, I mean, obviously the goal is to shake that rust off quickly and then just get to it. You know, but a, but say a competitor or you know someone else out there that's running last weekend, the weekend before, and so on. They're gonna be sharper. They're gonna be good, you right? Know? It's, and that's and the same. For it may sure. come down to luck if I beat him. You know what I mean? But yeah, that person is just gonna be sharper, like the guy that's doing, you know, ten shows more than you are a oh, month. You know, for sure. Yeah, that you see so clearly. The other mm-hmm. thing you you would see is like uh, similar to seat time. Like you would do shows here in LA if you were local, and you might be doing a couple spots a week. Sure. And then somebody goes on the road and mm-hmm. they start doing like like you know six and eight shows on the road performing right. to different audiences and then they come back and their game is just so tight tight yeah yeah and you're like yeah. oh shit right what happened there yeah you know no, it's just, the it, same kind of thing you know yeah. like oh you went and ran a handful of whatever series and came back and yeah all of a sudden we see it like oh wow he's been running that level car for a little bit and now he's back in these and he's spanking us you know spanking us yeah, yeah. So it definitely yeah. works out. And then way. that gets everybody's juices going, I'm sure. Yeah, and that's what builds the competition, which is great. But yeah, so all you guys, I mean, all the instructors are competitive. We're all competitive, and yeah. it's interesting because I always talk about not bringing an ego to the table, but, you know, we're all competitors, so there is an ego. It's a matter of kind of pushing that aside a little bit. Do you guys have, have you guys all done, like, timed laps? No, at Porsche we don't time, oh. which is uh, by design for this exact reason you know you can imagine you pull the clock out and it starts to become a race especially with a bunch of race car drivers so um trying to leave that part out of it and and just kind of you know we're all trying to deliver the same thing and we're all there for the same reason um now that being said do we have little challenges we do and stuff like that of course we do or do we go to k1 after work and and go karting and you know try to beat on each other a little bit there Uh, totally yeah what's k1 uh, go karts, so indoor karting, you know. Oh, okay. You know, like an indoor kart place. Uh, like a fun place. A like fun a, place, oh, yeah, yeah. Back to the beginning, right? right so the right. fun kart stuff, but but you guys still driving. You guys turn it on when you you, you turn it on. It becomes that would our suck own little. If you're like, I want to go go karting, and then like the Porsche driving team is there. Yeah, we've like, done oh. that. We've done that a few times, so that's <laughs> you know, always fun. Though. I keep coming in nineteenth. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. Um, you've also done stunt driving. I have. Yes. Yeah. You, is that something that you have to like the do does somebody who stunt drives like you did uh the ford versus ferrari which is a phenomenal mm-hmm. movie yeah and uh when i think when i saw the movie i didn't know i don't know if when i saw it if i knew you had done that but i right it was around that time and you okay. you told me and i was like because that movie's really it's really cool it came and out very good yeah really good story the you know uh christian bale matt mm-hmm. dame it's a, it's 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 an entertaining just fun movie right great story and there's epic driving in it. There um, is, yeah. And you're doing some of it. I did some of it, yes. Um, yeah. So, but to be like a stunt driver in in films, is that like a, is there, you know, a test or a qualification or is it just, I'm a pro and I can do this? Uh, yes and no. I mean, you know, it's, 
as race car drivers, you you can kind of fall into that industry a little bit mm-hmm. um, based on a certain job, you know, um, not necessarily Ford Ferrari, but, you know, earlier jobs where, oh, you know, we understand you're a pro driver, you know, we're, we're looking for this kind of thing. And then you end up there or you're meeting the right people. A lot of us in the driving industry kind of branch over to that side because it's, it's really good work to get yep. when you can get it. And, um, and it's a lot of fun too, but, um, what's your story behind like it, getting that job? Cause that's a, a pretty, the sweet. Ford Ferrari. Yeah, one? Yeah. Yeah. That one, um, actually started from, um, uh, my a good friend of mine was the lead driver in the movie. So a, uh, a guy named Tony Hunt. So Tony was the lead driver. He was doubling for Ken Miles or Christian Bale mm. in the movie. And, um, and we met on, uh, we were, they were shooting somewhere and I was on set with them and, it just was like, oh, hey, you know, good to see you again. And then got to meet the stunt coordinator. And long story short, it's a networking thing. Yeah. Get a call a week later um, asking if I'd be interested in doing some work. And then that snowballed into even more work with them. And there it was. Were you already at Porsche when that happened? I was, And yeah. so did they have to give you like a permission to do something like yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we, we had to discuss that um, pretty much all the way to the top about what's involved and all that. Um, they did shoot a little bit at Porsche, so there's actually a scene where they shot some of it at the PEC, which oh. was kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, there had to be some approval, and there's a little bit of, you know, boundaries around it for me. Um, but at the end, you know, got to drive some really cool stuff. Yeah, and, and they, uh, I mean, do, does uh, like, do they see it as good for the brand that they're chief guys in this? Of course, yeah. yeah they, they like the idea that, you know, we are current, whether it be in, in racing or stunt guys, you know, to, to be able to say, oh, yeah, one of our guys was in this movie, that that's really cool especially in a movie that is so so big in the world of motorsports yeah so yeah. wait why is it I, I don't know anything about this but there's huge names or you know brands for like the formula one teams mm-hmm. why isn't porsche one of those well porsche builds sports cars so mm-hmm. you know their thing has always been endurance sports car racing so le mans is really what they what they are yeah. you know um they've dabbled in formula one um back in the day um even in the early 60s and and built engines excuse me for formula one and even have even gone indycar racing Mm -hmm. but you know at the end of the day that's not what porsche is you know i think porsche is it's sports cars and you know i can't speak to it as far as i don't know exactly what the reason is but i see it as porsche knows what they make and what they are what they're great at and and they're an endurance sports car company from day one. Mr. So Porsche Mans, would just it, yeah. test cars for well over 24 hours over and over again just to see what would break. So you take that and now you do it in a race environment like Le Mans, then that just starts to make sense of why the brand is what it is. And, Have you gone to that? Cars. I haven't gone to Le Mans. That's always been, that's actually been my top goal. Um, as a kid, the reason I became a race car driver is watching the movie Le Mans with Steve McQueen. Uh-huh. Um, had it on beta back in the day, you know, and would watch that over and over again. And it really made me want to be an endurance sports car racer, especially Mm -hmm. for Porsche, watching the Golf 917 buzz around Mm -hmm. and the sounds. And there's, there's no dialogue in that movie. It's purely about the racing, you know? And, uh, that's kind of what, what generated the interest as a little kid. And, um, yeah, that's always been the goal. It's just, unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to go over there and race. What's the longest endurance race you've done? I've done 24 hour races. Wait, um, so it, can you explain this to me? Yeah. Like how, what is a 24 hour yeah. race like? Yeah. It's funny. Cause when we say that a lot of people that don't fully understand it will say, how do you drive for 24 hours? Right. You know? Um, but a 24 hour race usually involves multiple drivers. Uh-huh. So typically anywhere from say three to six, sometimes they stack a lot of drivers in there more than that. But, mm. um, you share the car based on different timing. You know, it can be multiple fuel stops, double stint, triple stint, stuff like that. It can be every hour we're coming in and replacing drivers. But basically, it's running the car, which this is actually the amazing part, driver aside. Driver aside, yeah. The car itself is running at speed, at full aggression for 24 straight hours. You know, there's no break except for pulling in the pits, getting new tires, sending it back out. Or if it breaks and you're fixing it to get back out, that's the break. Otherwise... Yeah. That car is going full bore for 24 straight hours. It's insane. And that, it's an insane thing. Where did you do yours? Um, I've done them. I've done them all over the country, but I've done uh, one in particular many times. The 25 hours of Thunder Hill, which is up north here in California. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done that one about 10 times. Is that on a circuit? Or it is. is that, it's it, on a road course up okay. at uh, Thunder Hill Raceway up in uh, Northern Cal. And you and what three other drivers? Are... Yeah, we've done it with I think 
three drivers, four drivers, five drivers, six one year. I mean, it just depends on how the team is. And how many times are you getting in? Like it depends. Um, I would say, you know, four to five times maybe throughout a race. You know, if I'm trying to do the math off the top of my head. Um, and then sometimes those stints, like I said, can be short. Maybe you're in for one fuel load, so it's an hour, hour and a half, yeah. two hours. Or sometimes, you know, based on the strategy, they're asking you to double stint or triple stint or even quadruple stint, and you can be in the car for, I think the longest I've been in the car is close to six hours at one point. Six hours Yeah. of yeah. just hammering just it. hammering, hammering the car. Yeah, driving around and, and yeah, talk about having to concentrate and focus. That's, that's the thing. That's an, mm -hmm. another thing that really stands out is, I mean, you know, on a very amateur level, mm -hmm. you realize that like when you're doing laps, you know, Willow Springs or Coda sure. or whatever right. with an instructor, you, all your focus is here. It is. I mean, it's, it's just it has there. Has to be. Has to yeah. be. Yeah. I right. mean, you're moving at a high rate of speed and a few yeah. thousand pounds. Right, and, right. And, but then you go like, man, the, um, the amount of attention and focus you have to have to do that, to do that for six hours. I mean, I, I noticed too that, you know, if you're under heavy instruction, you're doing multiple laps over and over and over, there is a level of fatigue after that. Absolutely. You're like, Oh man, like you're just yeah. So I can't imagine after six hours you just. It's tough. I yeah. mean that that's where you you start talking to yourself a lot. You mm -hmm. know, back to what I said about being rusty, talking to yourself. At that point too, you're you're talking to yourself. You hit your marks. You know, don't don't uh, you know make sure you're using all that track out room. You know, you're breaking at the right points. You're not making mistakes. You know, and you're texting. It's tough. You're right? texting. Yeah, 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 you're doing yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, but you know, it's it's just tough. You you can get you can start to feel ill in the car, whether mm -hmm. it be, you know, stomach starts to get upset or you start to get tunnel vision because you've just been in the car so long or fumes start coming into you the have car. have vibration usually in a, yeah. like a, you know. And you're starting to hear everything in the car that you don't want to hear. Like yeah. what's that rattle? What's that yeah. vibration? Stuff like that. But the concentration is, is endless. And that's really a big part of the sport that people don't fully understand. You know, people can say drivers aren't athletes. I say, go out there for an hour in a car and see what you think, you know, yeah. the amount of focus it takes is huge. And, that's part of the reason why in a driving school environment, there's this universal sort of number of 20 minutes. And that's, you know, typically if you go to a track day or, you know, driving school, you'll run 20 minutes to a half hour sessions at a time. Anything beyond that for the novice, the eyes start to fall, the concentration starts to go away, the fatigue sets in, yeah. and then mistakes happen. And then mistakes happen, yeah. So, you then know. you gotta get somebody off the track. Yeah, yeah. 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 and now, now the thing's shut down because you got a car in the weeds. How right? often do you have somebody who's like, this would be a fun experience and they get out there on a lap and they're like, I don't want to do this. This is too, like, do you have people that get freaked out by it? We, yeah, yeah. And that, that happens everywhere, of course. But yeah, yeah Porsche, it, it does happen. And, you know, we're, we're. <laughs> I wish you would release a series of compilations <laughs> yeah. of that. Uh, the, the instructors are trained really to kind of handhold a little bit and help get you through that. Our goal is that we don't want you to quit it. You know, yeah. some people will get sick and at that point there's nothing you can do, but sit, grab some water. Yeah. Um, but the others that are timid, it's like, well, we can start really slow. We don't have to go fast. That's the other thing. And even at a regular track day, you don't have to go out there and put down a qualifying lap. Yeah. You can just tool around for a while, just get used to it, get the feeling, yeah. you know, and build up to it. And that's yeah. what we try to do. That's cool because it, it, it is so, like that's what I try to tell people who have never done it, who like driving, I go, it's so foreign to yeah. what you've experienced on pedestrian streets. It is. It you is. Know, it kind of breaks a lot of the, the rules or habits that, that we all start with as a young driver up through your regular street driving career, you know? Even the way you hold the wheel. Yeah. You know, do you drive around everywhere at nine and three? No. Yeah. But on the track, that's where you should be, yes. you know? Are you looking into every corner as you drive around before yeah. you turn? No. But on the track, you should, you know? And then, like you said, the brakes, all those different things are, it's a different technique than we use every day. Yeah. Do you ever, um, every once in a while, maybe not even what, like randomly, do you ever get like the equivalent of what you go like, this is like a gifted driver? You know what I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. A, yeah. 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 Where you see um, like, wow, this person. And this has happened at really a lot of schools I've worked at over the years. Um, one of my favorite things is always, you know, you get the husband and wife that come in and the mm -hmm. husband's like got the helmet in hand, maybe race shoes on, you know, yeah. kind of geared up and, yeah. And we always joke that you don't want to be that guy, but they come in and the wife is there because he's kind of forcing her to do it maybe, or she's into it, but like, eh, whatever. It's his, yeah, it's his day. It's his thing. By the end of the day, we get her faster. We get her running quicker laps, making less mistakes. And it, and honestly, that's not, it's not to just show him up. No. 
But one, women listen and apply better than men. That's a huge part of it. So they're a better student. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just nice to see because she might not have some habits that we need to break. Right. Well, he may come in with some bad habits that now we're spending half the day fixing. That certain are correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. Versus a, a fresh person to mold that we can turn into what we need to much quicker. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder how many fights happen on the way out of this <laughs> Right, places. right. That's where we just see like, you later. Isn't it crazy how much faster I am than you? He's like, shut up. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, it's always a fun thing to see, kind of tail between the legs at the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I can guarantee you something. You could not get my wife to beat me in a race. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> There's the challenge. <laughs> it's her birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday. You'll always be slower. <laughs> She actually won't even drive the car. So. Perfect. That's yeah, better, right? right now. <laughs> she would be like, do you have one that, that makes music? And stuff? Right. <laughs> um, have you ever done the like, cannonball run? No, no, never have. Used any to interest? love the movie. but yeah. Any interest in doing it? Yeah, I've always kind of had a bit of interest in that because it's... For people that don't know, that's like the yeah. New York to LA right. uh, drive where mm-hmm. it's similar to your, what you're saying, it's you do it with, you know, you get in a car with a few people. Yeah. And and like... There's a convoy of people. Convoy and, of people. Yeah. Now, I've heard, like, that that was traditionally done as like, you know, let's see how, how fast we can do it. That now, with like technology now, people have been, who try to like break that record will get like a helicopter um, <laughs> wow. to, to, you know, spot um, checkpoints. I don't and, doubt it. Yeah, I, like, didn't, I didn't know that. Because they're trying but... to like break that those records, sure, you know? Sure, sure. Um, but I, I always thought that would be a fun thing to get a, a crew together. Yeah, it would to be. Leave at, you know, 1030 at night or yeah. whatever. And then just, just head out. Mob Here we it go. Down yeah. All the way to LA. Yeah. No, I've never, never been a part of one of those. This is a, you know? sorry, it's a cross country drive, New York to LA. And you're, right. you're trying to do it essentially In just refuel yeah. As, yeah, as fast as you can. Yeah. And, and, and there's some, I, I, you know, I don't know any of the details, but there's some rules around it now that didn't exist, like back in when the original movie came out with Burt Reynolds and all uh-huh. that Campbell Ryan. I mean, that was, those days were just like, let's go flat out the yeah. whole way. Um, I don't know, maybe some of that's happening now, but I think there's some kind of more um, guidelines and rules and protocols around it now. What would you do know. it in? You have to do it in a sedan, I suppose, right? Because otherwise... Do you? you well, <laughs> you don't have to. I'm saying for the sake, unless you're picking people up and... Someone's getting out, but if you want the same crew, a two seater is just going to be two of you. I mean, I guess you yeah. Can do it. I don't know. Um, I don't know. New nine eleven turbo would sure be a nice car to do it in. <laughs> well, why don't we petition Porsche and see if they'll hook it up? Well, I'll try that. <laughs> Hi, Porsche. Might yeah. work. Really? Who hey, knows? dude. Let's let's uh let's do it. Let's ask fun. him. Yeah, I would. That would be amazing. That would be fun. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, and we'll follow all the rules of the road, <laughs> especially the speed limit. Wink, wink. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We will never go 160 miles an hour. No, no, of course not. No, of course not. That would be very dangerous. <laughs> um, yeah, I've driven. I've driven um, pretty much everything in the. I think in the Super Series McLaren. Line yeah, you up. spent a lot of time with McLaren. Yeah, they hooked yeah. it up. Um, and I've driven like a, a handful of Ferraris, which are, mm-hmm. they're all, they're, all these cars are, they're, yeah. are amazing. Uh, the most terrifying car that I've driven, I did a video in it, was McLaren's 765 LT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I even uh, chatted with uh, Daniel Ricardo, the F1 driver yeah, wow, for, cool. for, for McLaren. And he was Very like, cool. I was like, everyone I've talked to who's driven that car was like, you should have to pass a test. Yeah. To, and he was like, agreed. Yeah. He said, uh, totally agreed. It's a lot of car. I've never had felt something that was that fast and that responsive in in a literally terrifying way. Yeah. And I was like, wait, you just have to be rich and you can have this. <laughs> right, you right. Know? That's what's scary. Yeah. It's scary. And then, you know, when you're seeing these, um, these zero to 60 times that are now coming out in the electric cars. It's ridiculous. Um, so Tesla announced the, the Plaid s the the this the a new model that's coming out Mm -hmm. and it's touting a zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds my thought on this honestly as somebody who just enjoys cars and and i'm like so that seems like a lot to just give (laughs) someone who just goes but i can buy this and you're like yeah but i mean that's just going to be in the hands of an amateur it's dangerous now right right yeah and that that time is going to keep going down like we're at 
the beginning of this. Yeah. So it's like, right. Yeah. You know, a couple of years from now, they're going to be like, hey, did you hear? You can go zero to 60 and 0. 0.08 <laughs> right. like second. You're like, wait, right. what? And where am I doing that? Where am you I know? doing yeah. that? And like, these cars are going to go through buildings. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, because you got to stop it too. You, That's yeah, you, the thing. You got to be able to stop it as fast as you just accelerate. And I'm somebody who, like, the idea of something faster and faster is exciting. Sure. But also aware that, like, you know, you got to be able to handle that. You yeah, know what you're doing. Right. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, one, one, I mean, two something, three something is a quick car. Dude, do you, you remember know? just like in the 90s? Yes. And they were like, this new 911 goes zero to 60 in six points. Right. And you're like, like no wow. Way. Wow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And now we're at uh, like not just half, but half of that now as, as the time. It's like, it's outrageous. It is in a car that weighs twice as much. Yes. You know, that's the crazy part. You're talking about a big car that, well, not maybe not big in size, but heavy car. 5,000 yeah. plus pounds getting, you know, two, just under three seconds, zero to 60. That's phenomenal. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you're right. We're at the beginning of it. What's going to happen? What's 10 years from now? Where are we at? Yeah. I mean, the, the idea that there's a, it used to be like in the last, even before these electric cars started to be produced heavily, anything like, you know, sub three, five, you're talking about, it would be like at least $300,000. Right. Super. So then you go, yeah. well, there's, you know, there's a few hundred of those. Like, right. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, but the fact a, that it's going to be a mass produced thing. That anyone can go buy. You go buy one today and roll it off into the street. You I know? mean, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be some epic dash cam videos coming out of probably, probably. car accidents we can't even wrap our heads around. Yeah. Because that, just well, the and, physics of that, right? And then, you know, for if, you know, segueing a little bit into electric cars, I mean, the way you drive them is different. You know, the torque curves are different now. Yeah, You're how, not dealing with you... a ramp up, like a power curve or a power band, right. like you would out of, you know, a combustion engine car. You're talking about linear power that that is essentially light switch yeah, it's there's no off. lag there's no turbo lag there's none no of that it's later. right there you know you're getting you know call it 700 plus horsepower to the wheels the second you push it you know which is amazing it's you know amazing. but it requires a little bit of a different driving style so you know if, if i'm lapping one of these types of cars around you know you're making sure that wheel is where you want it before you start adding too much power or else the car is just gonna end up understeering or oversteering or just you're gonna fight the car a little bit you know, you also got to think about the regeneration of the battery and the, the heat and all that. So, so there's a lot of things that come into play when you're putting a fast lap together in these cars versus how you might have driven, you know, a, a flat six, you know, a, a sure. GT3 or something like that, you know. So it is quite different. And, you know, it's something that, that we're working on, too, at the PC is getting people to understand that these cars are a little bit of a different animal. Mm -hmm. and. While driving is driving is driving, there's some little things to understand about these cars that are different. You know, you're yeah. talking about two motors. You're talking about the torque that is higher than anything else that's out there. And, and that and, weight is different. And the weight. Yeah. The weight. And the weight's low on most electric cars. The batteries are on the floor. So you don't have a high CG. You know, the center of gravity isn't high. You're not dealing with a lot of roll out of the car. Yeah. You're de dealing with like a flat skateboard almost that, yeah. that, that doesn't move around so much, which is great as a race car you want to build a, a car that way where the weight's low, low yeah. so it's really good but it's a different feeling for the general public you know? yeah i um i got to do launch control mm -hmm. at pcla yeah in the in the tycon turbo s and all, all i had driven before was like a tesla model yeah. x or whatever it was yeah and um you were like hey uh pin your head back <laughs> yeah to the seat and i was like okay and then you walked away and i was like <laughs> and then i did it and i was like ah, like yeah it that's really, why you said it <laughs> yeah i was like oh yeah that's why you're supposed to listen yeah i wish i was yeah. a woman <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i gave myself whiplash in that yeah. yeah yeah and it will do that i mean yeah. you know again it's 2.6 seconds that's wicked fast it's so you fast know? Man. yeah yeah it's crazy yeah like those are the time like the times that are being mass produced now are the times that Previously, you would have to be like a billionaire to experience. Yeah, you know, right. Like, and you'd you'd maybe see one at some car show thing or on TV, but you know now you're seeing the, these cars, these numbers we're talking about. You go right out here, you'll see one. Yeah, that's crazy. I also I gotta say that you also treated me to a hot lap mm. with you driving in a GT3 RS. Right. And yeah. I have a GoPro. I wish I had prepped it for today, mm -hmm. but it's me just laughing 
um, because yeah. you're just mobbing this this track yeah. and this thing. And in, incredible, man. Like yeah, thanks. the car is incredible. Your skill level, it was like. That was yeah. fun. I, I yeah. know. I remember some of the screen grabs from that. Yeah. With your face kind of <laughs> yeah, wide eyed. Like, ah, <laughs> I did. Yeah. No, that's fun, man. That that's you know that's what we like to do the most is kind of showing people what it's all about and and giving a lap like that and really putting a car like a GT3 RS, which is one of the best cars in the world, you know, through its paces. Yeah. You know. Can you pull up by the way, um, Brendan Schaub's GT2 RS real quick? So this is a buddy of mine. He got a GT2 RS. And then he had that modified. So yeah, his okay. uh, I don't know if you go to My his idea. um, okay. if you go to like the all search as opposed to the image, it might pull up when they modified it because he did it like on a it's show amazing. too, and it is so outrageous, man. Okay. Uh, so his GT2 RS makes like 970 horsepower. And he had, I mean, this thing is so crazy, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful Miami car. Blue. Yeah. I um, I can't imagine what it's like to track that thing, though, because it's so much. It's a lot, you know, and it, it comes back to that, you know, the horsepower versus, you know, momentum kind of thing. But also it's, you know, at some point you can have too much power depending on, you know, what tire are you running, you know, is it is the suspension modified, all these things that need to also be done to keep up with that amount of power. Yeah. Um, that car itself, adding that much power, I mean, it's it's pretty much capable as it stands. Yeah, as a stock. Uh -huh. to, yeah, to I mean, it's yeah, it's yeah. plenty, you know, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. for the rest of the car, but yeah, that's a pretty car. Um, I mean, I've driven GT2 RSs a handful of times, and, uh -huh. and they're, they're amazing, you know. It's, oh, will you tell me, uh, tell them, what's the... The Porsche that you love, that you said that you now own, what's the, like? What oh, a G model 911. So I own a 1984 Carrera, and it's just it's it's the Porsche you've seen your whole life, you know. Yeah, yeah. From it's the same car that was made from 74 up through 89. Um, it's that iconic 911. Yeah. It's that you know the, I saw a red 911 SC when I was a kid. Um, that was the first one I ever saw, and I remember I, I can still picture that today. And it's just always been one of my favorite cars. They were hand built back in those days, and um, it's they're just very unique. There's nothing built like them. They're built like a tank. It's the most visceral car I've ever driven, as far as just feedback. Yeah. And when I say that, you you don't need to go hustle the car around. I don't need to go put a qualifying lap in to to, to get to that feel feeling. that. Yeah, yeah. I can drive it up here and get right. that feeling. You know, Do you get a, you the, put a lot of miles on yours. You drive it. I, yeah, I probably should be driving it a little bit more. But yeah, um, I mean, at one point it was kind of my daily. Really? You know, yeah. So, and that's the beauty of them. They're they're bulletproof. If they're well maintained, those cars will go forever. Well, that's the other cool thing I would say that I've learned about the Porsche community mm -hmm. is that there are people that buy, you know, certain manufacturers' cars, and then they're like, "I got it," and then they're like, "There it is." Yeah. Right. And they they have it. And right. You see it in their garage, or yeah. they'll send you a picture of it, and it's got, you know, it's. It's six years old and it's got 370 miles on it. And you're like, cool. Yeah. Um, but a lot of <laughs> Porsche owners are just, they, they, they hammer, like they drive, they drive those them. things, man. They drive them. I mean, again, it's Porsche is a driving company. Those cars are meant to be driven. And the fact that you can jump in a 356 today and, you know, you could daily it all week if you want. And it's going to work perfectly for you. A well-maintained one, obviously. But yeah. Um, and they don't like to sit, you know, my, my dad's got a couple of them and, you know, he'll call and say, well, this one's leaking. I said, well, here's how you fix it. Go drive it, you know, yeah. because, you know, seals dry. I mean, th those cars aren't water cooled. They're all, it's all oil or air cooled with yep. a lot of oil, like a, like a race car, dry sump engine with 12 quarts of oil in that thing. Um, and yeah, the seals will start to dry up and it will start to leak. They all leak a yeah. little bit, but you start driving them, everything gets warm, you exercise the gaskets, all that stuff, and all of a sudden, now it's a little more sealed up and you enjoyed it, you know? There's nothing better than that. And like I said, my car's an 84, so that that's pretty old at this point, but it doesn't feel that way when I get in it. It doesn't. At all. Yeah. It really doesn't. I mean, besides like, you know, the fact that the air conditioning doesn't work great, everything else, I mean, it's it's as equal to a modern car as anything else that's you know? awesome man yeah i love it it's yeah. really cool yeah i mean i i feel like i'll keep the one i have now you will forever you will you know? yeah. yeah just keep adding to them right yeah 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 it's already <laughs> yeah. a problem it's my, an addiction I yeah know. yeah my I wife's know. like 
are we done with cars? And no, I just no. go, are you out of your mind? Right. right. She's like, right. Are we done like, breathing? She's like, know? well, how many are you going to get? I go, as many as we can fit. Yeah. Like, yeah. We'll put, I'll put cars on the roof. Sure. The right. Stack them. Whatever you yeah. got to do. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm stacking them now. So. Yeah. Good. 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 <laughs> um, well, look, man, I really appreciate you coming by. Yeah. I, um, it, it's a pleasure like getting to know you. I, I love, um, you know, the experience I've had at PCLA. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm, you know, this is a, it's not a paid endorsement. I really, I, I really love it. Um, I recommend it to people. If you want a fun experience, if you like cars, if you, especially if you like Porsches, like the whole setup, man, like it's a, it's a, it's so well done walking yeah, through you. that showroom. You see in like mm -hmm. these vintage and rare ones and ones that were in, in races. And then you have the big glass, where you can see like the mechanics working on like right, a club sport, sport division, or like the, yeah. yeah, like all this like awesome stuff. And then you get out there and like I said, it's a playground. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a great day. It's a fun fun event. If you want to yeah. do it, I highly recommend you. You cool. Do it. Yeah. 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 And thanks for having me. This has been a pleasure. And, yeah, uh, man. Absolutely. We need to get you back out there though soon. I haven't seen you there in a while, so I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> cool. I promise. I promise. Cool. Thanks. For, all right. Thanks again. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys.